you know, when you're trying to scale up something that is as heavy and complex as a vehicle and you've got tiny margins to work with, that is a very, very difficult needle to thread. But when you're working with something that it weighs much less, the complexity is much less, the supply chain is much less than, you know, the the challenge of scale. Like basically they can afford to just pursue this at full speed as fast as they can go. You know, when you really stop to think about just from first principles, how many people in the world work on something that each human gets the direct benefit of that labor in a day? It's thousands, if not tens of thousands. Why would there only be one, two, three, or four bots per person at a ceiling? Now, I, I, there's definitely a huge argument that you can make that only a certain fraction of the bots that there will be will be humanoid robots. And I would agree with that. But, you know, we're talking about hundreds or thousands of robots per person is probably where this ends up in the long tail version of the future. Just because if you as a consumer have more needs that you'd like to have met than only three or four bots, then there will be a market for it. And that, I mean, it's insane to think about, but when you break it down to first principles, the question is, why is that not going to be the case? As long as the energy is there, as long as the intelligence to operate those bots without human input is there, why are they not trying to provide you with more and more goods and services? Good question. Let's get back to some more bot stuff. So, sir, and you shared this. This is from, I think it was Smoke Away originally wrote it about this, the ramping. Um Elon did say maybe 10,000 next year, already has two working in a factory today. They hope to get to, do you say 500 by the end of the year, but maybe 10,000 next year or 5,000 next year? Does that ring a bell? No, he said next year it will be 1,000 or 2,000 next year. Okay, 1,000 or 2,000. Yeah, sorry, sir, let me, if it's okay. So this uh, post by Smoke Away matches all the interviews we've done with the CEOs of quite a number of bot, humanoid bot companies, where they would say, you know, we've got handfuls of them today. I think that the ramp will be next year, it'll be tens to hundreds, then it'll be thousands, then it'll be 10,000, it's like a 10x each year. Many, many CEOs of humanoid bot companies said the same thing. When Smoke Away said this, 1,000, 2024, that's 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 a lot higher than any company. Nobody, no company has a thousand this year, but a lot of start talking about it. Ten thousand next year is a ten x from that, and and so forth. Elon said not quite that fast, but not far wrong. Yep. So, yeah. So now for him, for them to say that Elon to say that we're gonna have one or two thousand next year, that is staggeringly faster than anybody's ever said. I guess when you see this, you think that they're behind. They're actually well, well ahead. Just to coincide with the numbers that I had put together, this is an illustration on the right. You can see my ramp was much, much more conservative. And that got to test like, you know, 10 million bucks deployed in total cumulatively by 2032, right? And 10 million bots deployed at some of the numbers that we projected gets you to, a, you know, potentially a $10 trillion market cap just on 10 million bots. You know, we don't know how fast it can ramp. I thought Elon's comment here was was pretty staggering. Not quite that fast, but not far wrong. You know, even if these numbers are half of what Smoke Away put together here, if they're making 50 million by 2029, that is a massive number of bots. And you follow that through on Tesla's financial statements and you get some big numbers. Um, it is absolutely staggering. So, and maybe share with the audience how the bots can help ramp the bots too. And also, <laughs> bots are not as complex as cars, nor do they have as much components or metal or weight. And he, Elon, said something very interesting during the shareholder meeting that I, I didn't hear anybody else pick pick up on. But he talked about the actual cost cost of goods sold. And he said you can bring it down basically to the weight of what you're selling. Did anybody pick up on that? I thought that was very profound. Basically, you can keep shaving costs down to basically the weight of the metal. Hands yeah, and the Optimus is about 3% of the weight of the Model 3. 
So, you know, it's not that much weight. It, you don't need giga, you know, giga presses, for example, to build bots. You don't need this massive, massive factory that you see in te Texas to build vehicles. Building bots at scale will be a massive challenge. Elon has talked about that. And so building them at scale will still be difficult, but not as challenging as building vehicles at scale. And so, you know, Tesla is great at manufacturing. They will figure out a way to build millions and millions of these things. And so the margin back... profile of them makes it a much easier scale up too. that, you know, when you're trying to scale up something that is as heavy and complex as a vehicle and you've got tiny margins to work with, that is a very, very difficult needle to thread. But when you're working with something that it weighs much less, the complexity is much less, the supply chain is much less com complex. And then the thing has a margin profile that's an order of magnitude more profitable than a car, then, you know, the the challenge of scale, like basically they can afford to just pursue this at full speed as fast as they can go. And they're not going to be worried about, you know, trying to pick up pennies at the early part of the ramp because they won't necessarily need to. The other interesting thing about this is robots as a service. As the bots are further developed, they become more capable and yeah. therefore more valuable. And so if you offer it as a service, it gives you the ability to increase the, the price of the bot on a per month or per year basis as the robot's capabilities increase. So initially when they roll these bots out, maybe these bots can only do tasks that you, you would pay a human you know, $15 an hour for. But as the robot gets more intelligent and more capable, they will work their way up the food chain to be able to do work that you would pay 15, 20, 25, 30, $35 for per hour. And so that allows Tesla to adjust the pricing of the bot as well. Uh, now, I always joked it was like factory worker by day, sushi chef by night. Yeah. Type of thing. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, I'm not so sure about this um, this idea that many of us are getting excited about about bots building bots, because even even Scott Walter has been saying that if once you get to full manufacturing, you don't necessarily need to have humans in the loop for many things. It, you know, mobile phones are being manufactured today. How many humans do you actually need to have in that process? As you, what matters more is automated factories, and who's the leader in automated factories? It's it's Tesla. They're already doing that with their cars. I think in the automotive factory, somebody told me that at this point, 50% of jobs in an auto factory is done by human. So certainly you will need bots that can help that. But creating the bots themselves, do you really need a human if you didn't have the bots to do that? Or or is it something that you could eventually just have fully, fully automated? Well, yeah, I, I definitely be... lean towards that. The fewer humanoid robots in the loop of manufacturing bots as you scale up to any sort of significant volumes that, um, you know, if you're talking about making something in the millions of units per year quantity, that you more than justify the capital cost of any specialized tooling. And specialized tooling is going to be much, much faster and more efficient at scale at building these things than the general purpose humanoid robots will. You've got to admit, though, from a theatrical standpoint, bots building bots would be pretty cool. So it, maybe at the very end of the factory line, the last bot that gets made turns around and puts the last piece <laughs> on the next bot. Presses the button to turn them Presses on. The button, wakes them up. <laughs> And and just so people know as well, I walked the Cybertruck line twice mm, with right. a Ford engineer, and he walked me through everything. He said, "There is no humans on this line." Mm. And we spoke to a couple of the guys. They have engineers who supervise the line from above from cameras, yeah. and they detect bugs, and then they intervene if there's a problem. Mm. But it's completely automated every step of the way. It's bonkers. So sharing this slide one last time because we're going to move quicker now. Ten X every year. CERN, way back when, when we modeled, you had 10 million bots out to 2034, if I'm not mistaken. This has 10 million out to 2028. Who's right here? Well, so based difference... on Elon's response, uh, Smoke yeah. Away is more right than I think the projections that I had, which I think in hindsight now look pretty conservative. 
Exactly. And you mentioned well, phones, Herbert. You mentioned phones yeah. versus bots. This is a very interesting analysis as well mm-hmm. by you, Stern, in terms of the actual sheer volume. You want to explain this for a second to the people? Yeah, this is an interesting one. I'll take you through this really quickly. So Apple right now has an estimated 1.4 billion active iPhones in the world. And Apple has, let's say, annual revenues of about 400 billion. So per active phone per year, Apple's getting about $285, right? Now, people people buy new phones every you know three or four years, but just on average, $285 per year per phone. And Apple's market cap is $3.3 trillion. Okay. Let's skip the middle of this for now. Let's go to the bottom. If Tesla's market cap was to match Apple, 3.3 trillion, and if revenue per bot was 28,000, which is $4 an hour, 7,000 hours a year, that would generate, to get $400 billion, they would need to have 14.3 million bots in operation. Okay, so go back to Smokerway's projections and when Tesla's gonna ramp up production, how long is it gonna take to get 14 million bots 2028. 2028. Or 2029. Yeah. Okay. So just on bots alone, you could have 14 million or thereabouts. And just the bot valuation would be 3.3 trillion that would match Apple. Now, again, if Tesla's on a massive ramping schedule, the marketplace would probably assign them a much higher PE than Apple is getting. And so if we go to the middle of the page, this is looking out some point in the future. If there are 10 billion bots in the world, and if Tesla has 20% market share, that's 2 billion bots. And now if the bot pricing is only $2 an hour, 14,000 a year, Tesla's revenue from bots could be 28 trillion and the market cap then could be 230 trillion, right? So Elon's projection of saying bots could create a $25 trillion market value for Tesla I said he could be off by a factor of 10. I came at from different numbers, but this also is very similar. It would be 70 times Apple just with 2 billion bots. Now, 2 billion bots is a lot, but as Hans mentioned, it's not really when you consider everything they could be used for and also when you consider the off-planet potential for bots down the road. That's a whole other thing that that is out there. It's not near term, but if we're going to be, be doing something on Mars, and we know a guy that's that's hell bent on it, right? It makes a lot of sense to send in the bots as well as a few humans and more bots than people. Two billion bots to me, longer term, doesn't seem crazy. I know 230 trillion in market cap seems crazy to a lot of people, but let's check back in a decade or two and see if it is. And in the meantime, we all have to stay healthy. Yeah. All right, so we're, we're going to do some live modeling of some bots we're going to get numbers from everybody and do that in a second. There's a couple of other slides here. Herbert, did you put these slides in regarding the step changes? No. The price, the seasonality? Um, I added those, James, in case you okay. wanted to discuss that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we don't need to go back to history, but I do think what is important is, first thing is, we're going into election year seasonality. So we know the stock market does very well in election years. A lot of people want to know. When is Tesla going to move? Uh, and most of the action happens June onwards. So that's the first point. And we've seen crazy gains in traditional markets, NASDAQ, for example, driven by NVIDIA. Actually, that's an interesting side question for you guys. When do you think Tesla will have its NVIDIA moment? Yeah. Well, so one of the things about NVIDIA is just that it was such a large company. And I this is where I do think that to Herbert's point, it's kind of a show me the numbers that when you have a company that is within spitting distance of, you know, a, a top 10 market cap company in the world, that it takes earnings growth to make massive moves. And this is where I'm not sure that we can expect the types of moves that we saw in 2018, 2019 in anticipation of those earnings growth moves. I think we actually have to see the earnings growth hit the bottom line. Um, But once we begin to see, I think it'll start with, you know, the rollout of a robo-taxi network or either that or large growth in FSD SaaS revenues or a combination of the two of them. Um, But once we start to see software type margins 
and the cash flow and revenue that come from that flowing through and people are looking at, okay, hey, is this something that's going to grow over time or not? And everything looks like, yes, we're set to grow, that we're going to have a vehicle platform that's cheaper to produce in COGS and is going to have higher volume uh, upper limits, then that's when you'll really start to see people open their eyes and, and start to assign some of that value to Tesla at that point in time. Exactly, because the wild card is the FSD subscription. If they can get to, say, a 20% penetration rate, and that's all pure margin, that could have a huge impact. And that's something that Wall Street will understand. If, of course, the company itself needs to get recategorized as a technology SaaS company, because right now the auto analysts are stuck banging rocks together and they can't quite wrap their heads around Tesla. But another one regarding Tesla seasonality as well, uh, I put a big green arrow over this too, and a shout out to Josh who got this out there. But you can see here very clearly, Tesla has its best period in the markets, summertime onwards. And that's probably because the automotive industry is slow in Q1, Q2 is a bit messy, but then towards the end of the year, it really ramps up. So that could be another good tailwind for us as well.